Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I'm back with a tips and tricks video for you guys. Um, this one in particular is gonna be using uh, products from the newest release from By the Well for God for Follow Me. This is their newest devotional kit. Uh, I do have an unboxing of this release. I will link down below for you guys. I believe there may be a few kits still left in stock, so you can still grab it. Um, if not, unfortunately, they don't usually restock um, soon. They may restock later on, months down the road. Um, but if you missed out on the devotional kit, there is still some add-on goodies like the stamps and stencils. Um, and just keep in mind that you can do the techniques that I'm sharing with you here with other products and other kits and things like that. So this is just to kind of show you some examples for the month using this particular release. Um, I like to do this, I did this last month, that way I can refer you back to this, especially if I'm just creating images and posting them on Instagram. There may not be a full process video, um, but I'm gonna be using some of these techniques throughout the month, and then that way I can just refer you back to this particular video. So uh, for this month, I just picked a handful of techniques. Of course, there's lots of different things that you can do with these. Revisit last month's tips and tricks for contending for the faith. You can use those for this release, just by changing the colors that you're using and things like that. So I'm hoping these will be some kind of evergreen uh, videos with different ideas and ways to use your things. Now, this is not necessary for Bible journaling. This may be a little extra, a little over the top, but if you are looking for some new ways to use the things that you have, use some things from your stash, like alcohol inks, things like that, I'm hoping this will give you some ideas. So uh, some of the techniques we're gonna be looking at is uh, this one here. When I did the unboxing of the kit, I mentioned this Strive to Enter stamp set, and they had this really fun kind of watercolor uh, scene on the back, and so I wanted to show you how to create that no-line watercolor look um, with this stamp set. Now that can work with any other stamp set as well. I'm also gonna be showing you how to dry emboss with stencils. This is a technique I've kind of showed a couple times. I do plan on doing a Tip Tuesday specifically for this technique. Um, I, when I incorporate this technique into videos, sometimes I forget what video it's in. Um, and so stay tuned, there will be a Tip Tuesday specifically for this, but using a stencil to create texture on cardstock, but also on vellum. Um, but then in addition to that, you can just use it, you know, plain white, leave it as is. But I wanted to show an extra little tip and trick uh, using some more texture elements and inks and things like that. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, but as well as dry embossing, you can dry emboss on vellum. Um, but vellum is very tricky. It's very delicate. You can see here it tears if you just dry emboss it like how I normally dry emboss with uh, stencils or even regular embossing folders. So I will be adding a few extra little tips and tricks for how to get good results. Um, on vellum, so stay tuned for that. And then this image here, now, I mentioned that I'm gonna be working in my illustrating Bible this month. This particular kit has a lot of soft watercolor imagery. The illustrating Bible is not necessarily friends with watercolor. Uh, I know some of you use it, have no problems, but there's something about the texture of the paper. Um, if you overwork it, it just does not like watercolor. And so um, I wanted to show you a way to get that watercolor look um, and have it on the page without actually coloring directly on the page. Um, but this is also just an idea for, you know, ways to use alcohol inks if you have them in your stash. Um, so you can use this panel in its entirety, or you could fussy cut out these images and use them as ephemera pieces. Um, and this is just on uh, clear acetate. So I wanted to kind of show you how I do that and get this really pretty fun look. This would be great for cards as well. So let me go ahead. We're gonna clear things off here and we'll start with this watercolor panel here. All right, so this first technique is gonna be this no line watercolor stamping. Now, for this particular technique, I prefer to use watercolor brush markers. Um, there's the Zig Clean Color Real Brush, there's the Arteza brush markers. I have shown these before, I've done a couple techniques with these before, and I have some caveats that come along with this. If you were doing this directly in your Bible, it doesn't matter whether it's the Illustrating Bible, I've tested it in there, um, your regular traditional journal Bibles, these pens bleed through when they're activated with water. I know I've seen people out there swear up and down that the Zig Clean color do not bleed through. They may not bleed through if you're using lighter colors and don't add water, but as soon as you add water, which is kind of typically how these are meant to be used, um, they're going to bleed through. And that's because these brush markers are a dye based ink that's inside of them. I have yet to find a pigment-based um, brush marker or a true traditional watercolor marker even if they say watercolor marker read the ingredients read the background back you know of the packaging usually will say that it's a dye based ink uh, dye inks bleed through paper 
pigment inks do not. They sit on top of the paper, um, typically. And so if there is, I've tried a lot, I've researched a lot, I've yet to find one that is not you know, a dye based ink. If there's a new one out there, leave me a comment down below. But like I say, I try to really stay up, up on the know when it comes to these because I would love a true watercolor marker. But all I have to say, um, this is these are the products that I use for this technique. Now, if you're wanting to do this directly in your Bible, you can, but you need to prep your pages first or just ignore the bleed through. That's probably the easier way. But if you don't want the bleed through, you need to page prep. Um, if you're not familiar with page prep, I think I have a video, I'll link it down below, kind of talking about some of the different products. This particular one isn't in that video because I discovered this later on. Um, this is my preferred product for page prep and that's transparent watercolor ground. I know that there are a lot of, it's two different camps. It's like 100% page prep all the time and those who are like, I don't fuss with page prep. And if you're page prepping, a lot of people don't like the texture of page prep. What is page prep? It means you're adding a um, product to the page that's basically creating a barrier so things don't seep down into the fibers of the paper. Um, gessos, white gesso, clear gesso, typically have a little bit of texture to them and not everybody likes that. They kind of want to reach for um, other gessos. This one from Art Basics, um, clear gesso is a very, very smooth clear gesso. Um, you can also use... Um, matte gel medium that's more of a glue but it works as a page prep and is very very smooth and it may feel nicer but it actually doesn't work better with things like distress inks or these watercolor markers um, you need a little bit of texture to kind of hold on to the product that you're putting it on um, putting over it and so that's where i prefer this transparent watercolor ground now this does not make it 100% the same as watercolor paper, but it does have a little bit of tooth. It does soak up a little bit of the product so that it performs more like watercolor paper. So this is my preferred page prep, um, especially if you're gonna be using this technique directly into your page. Now I would just apply this with like a gift card or a thin spatula palette knife, really, really thin over the page. Make sure it's good and dry. This says to air dry for 24 hours. I don't follow directions. I use my heat, to heat tool and dry it and that seems to work fine. Um, but if you're not wanting to fuss with page prep and all that goodness, you can still do this technique. You're just gonna wanna do it on a separate piece um, of paper. Again, I prefer something like mixed media or watercolor. If you use a traditional cardstock, this technique isn't going to work as well. It's going to grab a hold of the ink and it's not going to move as easily. So you want something where you can kind of move the ink a little bit. Um, so today I'm using some Canson mixed media paper. This is kind of my favorite um, because it's thin enough that it doesn't create a lot of bulk in your Bible, but it also kind of performs like watercolor paper um, where you can move things around. So you can create these panels and then insert them in as a tip in. This would also be a great idea if you're going to be using the Tag Bob, Tag Bob kit from this month. Um, this is the kit that comes with all these fun little tags. Then you could cut these panels um, from the mixed media or even watercolor paper into the tag shapes and then incorporate them into your tag ring. So there's just some ideas for how to use this particular technique. But what is the technique? So we are gonna be um, watercolor, no line stamping. So I've got my stamps loaded on some blocks here. And then you're just gonna color, I have some stuff on here. You're gonna color directly onto the stamp and then we will use a water brush to activate it. So I'm gonna make sure this is good and clean because I had done this once before um, and then I'm refilming it. So I am rubbing it on my skin just to take away the slickness. That's gonna help the stamp kind of grab a hold of the ink that we are putting on there. Now you don't have to work super, super fast. Um, these do dry down eventually, but we can reactivate them. So I'm using a combination again of the Arteza markers and the uh, Zig Real Color Clean Brush markers. I am working on the Tonic Studios glass mat, so I have to apologize for the glare, but this makes it nice because there is a palette. I've gone ahead and removed that non-stick mat, and I'm using these squares as a palette. So I'm leaving a little bit of color down on here to play with here in a second, but we're gonna paint directly onto our stamp. Now you can try this uh, technique with other 
water activated mediums like um, distress inks or neo color two crayons um, ink tense pencils uh, it's just going to give you a different look you might have a thicker line with the crayons a more intense line with the ink tense pencils um, so experiment with what you have before you go and buy a new product um, you may be able to get this technique to work with what you already have so these markers are our brush so they're just like a paintbrush they're filled with a dye-based ink, and so I'm just going to paint directly on to the stamp. It does not have to be perfect. Um, I have found it best to mix colors, so I'm not worried about um, coming back in with another color over this color. I actually find that the look is better if you kind of mix colors in. So I'm using the gray on the window panels, and then I'm going to come in with the blue. Now, I am going to add the blue to the outline of the door. And you can use, you know, whatever colors you want, but I'm just gonna get, walk you through my thinking here. And then I'm gonna add the blue to the left side of the, pan, of the window panel and then the top, left side and the top. I'm not like making sure it's perfect. Um, you want it kind of skippy and imperfect. That's gonna give you that soft watercolor look. Coming in with the green, I am gonna add a little bit of green right over the top of where I added some of the blue. And this is gonna mix things together to give you the variation in color. Um, and then I'm gonna add this kind of to the right side and bottom over the top of the gray. And just, it does not have to be perfect. If you are stamping directly in your Bible, you may want to do this on a separate piece of paper first to kind of get a feel for you know how you like things adding some yellow to the doorknob. And then at this point, some of the color has dried, so we need to activate everything. These are activated with water, so just the moisture in your breath will activate this enough to stamp. It does not have to be a perfectly stamped image. So I'm just gonna huff on the stamp that's gonna activate it. And then I can go ahead and stamp this down onto my page. Now, you do not have to do that with these stamps. You can stamp these with regular inks, Versify ink, Versamagic inks, and just paint it in. That is not a problem, but this is gonna give you that no line work look. So you can see it's not a perfect stamped image, but that is okay. Um, we are going to kind of fill that in as we paint. So I'm now gonna take a water brush have a paper towel here. I prefer to use a water brush over a traditional paintbrush. These brushes have water already in the barrel of them. I like the Arteza ones because they have this black piece here that kind of controls the flow of the water so you're not getting too much water. The key with this is you don't want too much water. If you have too much water, it's gonna kind of obliterate the stamped line and we don't want that. You can see here that I've got, you know, some defined edges where I had stamped and you wanna maintain that because if you wash it all in one color, the design goes away. So um, I just have a paper towel in my hand. Um, if I'm getting too much water on the brush, I can kind of dry it off. So I'm gonna start by just, I want a little bit of water flowing. I'm gonna start by touching the edge of the stamped line and then kind of pulling that color into the image, kind of coloring it in. And you'll see that that ink is just gonna kind of wick right into where I have water. So again, I'm just kind of lightly touching that area and you can see I'm getting blues and greens pulling in. As you're painting, you are picking up some color. So if you find that you're getting too much of one color, like too much blue, just go ahead and wipe off your brush and then continue on. And now I'm going with a clean brush so I'm not getting that muddled mix of color that's all one color. I'm kind of avoiding the uh, windows because we're going to pull those into the window but I am kind of just dragging color and I have my palette here because if I want more of a particular color I can pick that up off the palette because this operates just like watercolor watercolor that does bleed through so just keep that in mind Do a little bit down the center here I like it nice and soft, but you can do, you know, really intense and play around with your color combinations. Depending on what color markers you use, you're gonna get different, different colors pulling out. So at this point, now I have my windows are just left um, blank. I want to go ahead and dry this layer. 
It doesn't have to be fully dry, but I don't want puddles of water because when I activate the inner part of those windows, it may wick out into the part I've already painted. So now I'm gonna go ahead, same thing, I'm just touching it. I can see I have a water droplet. Touching it to the edge and then pulling the color into the window. Now that gray is really, really faint. So I can come in and just pick up, I do have a puddle of water there. Pick up the color and add that in if I need it to be more pigmented. You can see my brush is pretty wet and so I'm kind of getting, I'm losing control. So if that's happening, just wipe off your brush and then go back in there. With these, they are not like traditional watercolors, so they're a little bit harder to blend. Um, so it's better to work in the term wet on wet. So you're wanting some water down on the page before you drop in color. If you just go on a dry paper, it's a little bit harder to blend out those edges. So because that gray that I had used on the stamp was so faint, I am just gonna kind of paint this in with the color that I have over here. And then I'm gonna kind of mix and create a mix of color to kind of deepen in those windows. And you can see I'm not doing it perfectly. I'm letting it be messy. Um, this kit has more of a loose style watercolor look, which is perfect. If you are not a traditional watercolorist, it makes it a little bit easier to recreate. With your marker, and sketch in some shadowy areas if you want. Sketch in those lines to kind of bring things back if you want to. And then if you activate that with water, you can kind of soften that back up if it's getting too harsh. So these are pretty forgiving um, with these markers and things. You can see my paper's kind of wet, so it kind of does its own softening there. If you are a perfectionist, this is probably not the technique for you because um, it can be a little bit tricky to get a precise look. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to do my little doorknob there. Ideally, I would dry that first, but that's okay. Let's say I want a little more yellow. I can come in. Using direct to paper with a marker is also a great way to add some shading in there if you want to. And you can see as you work, if you overwork the lines, the lines disappear. So just just be you know careful with that. You can see right here I've kind of lost my line. So I can come back in and kind of carefully sketch that back in. And just kind of continue to work it until it's where you want it. Okay, so moving on, creating the base here, creating that, that flooring. I'm gonna actually use a ruler. So I'm gonna lay my ruler down just at the base of the door. And then we're gonna go direct to paper. So I'm gonna use a purple and a blue. The purple, I'm just gonna create some little skippity lines, not a perfect line. And then the blue, I am gonna go all the way across. And at first that looks very intense and very dark, but hang with me. Um, for this, when you're working in big areas, uh, I do find it a little bit easier to use a traditional paintbrush and water. You can do it with a bigger water brush, but you may have a harder time with harsh lines. So I'm gonna lay down a little bit of water, just clear water, not touching the paint quite yet. And then now as I come up with my brush and touch that painted line, you can see the color is just gonna move right down into where I have water at the bottom of the page. And as I continue to work that against that line, you can see it's releasing pigment, not pigment, dye <laughs> into the bottom area. And then I can come back in and add some shading if I want to and kind of just fuss with that until it's how you like it. So there is the ground. And then for the wall, same thing. I'm gonna add some water down. Ideally, you want your door dry first so you don't reactivate anything there, but we'll just be careful. So I'm just adding a little bit of water. Mixed media paper is not the same as um, watercolor paper. So it doesn't take water quite as well as watercolor paper. So you just wanna keep that in mind. Now I am gonna activate 
that and just kind of watercolor this in. Letting it fade out into the water and again, touching that line is gonna let it bleed up to the top. Okay, same thing over here. Again, as I touch that line with my wet paintbrush, it's gonna let dye kind of wick into my wall. right up to the door, but being, being careful. Now, if I wanna add some different colors in here, I can. Water to soften it out. And if I wanna add some shading, I can, so I can come in here, pick up a lot of that, a little bit of that pink. And then fade that out. And there is a really quick and easy way to get that look that you have on the back of the stamp set. Now, before I did the background, if you wanted to add in the window, you could stamp in the window and do the exact same technique. You can do the same thing with the girl as well, um, or any of your other stamps. It does not have to be this. It can be flowers. It can be, you know, any other stamp that you have. You can do the same look and build a scene with it. You can see with this one, I used a lot more water than I did on this one. This one, I really maintained those lines. This one, we got pretty washy. So depending on how much water you use, um, and again, just kind of playing with it on a separate piece of paper before you incorporate it into your Bible is probably ideal if you haven't ever done that technique before. So there is that watercolor stamping. Let me clean up my mess and we'll move on to the next little technique that I have for you guys. Okay, the next technique that we're gonna do is this um, kind of watercolor look on clear acetate. I'm using the Spirit Gives Life stamp set, but you can use you know whatever you want. Uh, on the back here, it kind of gives you an example of a way to color that in. And I did kind of use that as inspiration, but kind of did my own thing as well. Uh, I really love the soft watercolor look of this kit. And again, it's a little bit tricky to do that watercolor in the Illustrating Bible. So this is a way that then I can use this entire panel. I can cut it into pieces using its layering elements. I could fussy cut these out and use them as ephemera pieces. Um, and it just really gives you a fun texture and different look. I am doing all of this on some clear acetate. I will try to link some down below. There's a lot of different, different ones out there. I'm not sure exactly which one this one is because I had it in my stash. It was like a big 12 by 12 sheet that I cut down. Um, and then we do want to stamp on acetate with something like archival ink um, or stays on ink. That's best for stamping on a slick surface like this. And then we're gonna color it in using alcohol inks. Now I know not everybody has alcohol inks. These are a big no-no in your journaling Bibles because um, they for sure will bleed through. So not everybody has these, but you can do this technique also with Sharpie markers or alcohol markers if you have them. Um, you could do this with, um, I'm trying to think of some, maybe some uh, paint on the back if you wanted to paint them in with, let's say, distress paint, but I'm wanting that really soft, translucent look, so I'm going to use alcohol inks. A lot of people that have been crafting for a while may have alcohol inks in their stash and not quite sure how to incorporate that into their Bible journaling. This is a way to do that. So let's go ahead and start by stamping. So I am going to use a stamp positioning tool. Um, when you're stamping on something slick like acetate, uh, it can be a little tricky and you may need to stamp multiple times. So I'm just going to do one for the sake of this video, um, just so we're not here forever. Um, but I, to do that panel, I have laid out like most of these stamps all at once and then stamped them. So let me go ahead. I'm just going to add this kind of to the top there probably. I'm gonna pick that up with the lid of the positioning tool. Using my magnets to kind of hold everything down. Okay, I'm gonna stamp with archival ink. This is black soot. And I have found it helpful to stamp a couple times to really get a nice, crisp, clean image. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I have this really nifty tool that a sweet friend sent me. I will link this pressure tool down below for you guys if you're interested in picking that up. It makes it really easy to uh, get a good impression. Now, because it moved, I'm gonna move it back into the corner, which is a nice thing about using a positioning tool is I can do that. And then I'm gonna stamp this one more time just to get that really, really crisp black. Now, you don't have to use black. You could use, you know, archival ink in whatever color that you want, if you wanted something colored, but I'm gonna use black. All right. Take that 
out. We're gonna set this aside. All right, so I've gone ahead and kind of zoomed you in so we don't have as much glare. And I've added a piece of white paper behind here just so that you can see what I'm doing. I did the same thing when I was painting these um, off camera. I had a piece of white paper underneath so I could see. So I have stamped on the front of the acetate and I've gone ahead and switched this around so the orientation is the same here so you can see that. Um, but we are actually gonna paint on the back side. So my ink that I stamped is on this side. I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna color on the back side. That's gonna leave that black nice and intense. Um, I don't want the alcohol to activate the archival ink because it can um, wipe it away. And so we are gonna color on the back side. So there's nothing on the back side, it's clean. So you can see now I've flipped it over and then we're gonna color with alcohol inks. So I have a selection here. Again, I am working on my tonic mat um, and that you can remove the non-stick sheet and that's gonna expose this palette. With alcohol inks, you do wanna work on something glass or something similar to glass because these stain whatever they touch. I have these in my stash for this technique but also for um, tinting and coloring things. So like brads, paper clips, um, you can use these to change the color of those items um, and then it's, it's permanent which is really nice. So there are a lot of ways that you can use alcohol inks um, even in your Bible journaling. So I also have paint brushes these ones are from ranger and they are specifically i have these dedicated to alcohol inks i don't use these for anything else i only use these when i'm painting with alcohol inks i also have a little tray here and i'm going to put some 91 percent isopropyl alcohol into this tray um, just so i can clean my paintbrush um, in between colors also if i need to add a little bit of alcohol to thin out a color or reactivate a color i can do that alcohol inks are just that they have alcohol in them so they they dry and set pretty quickly uh, so i'm going to start with the let's start with the pink here so i'm using pink sherbet i'm going to plop out a little bit here onto my mat and then I want to make sure my brush is not clean <laughs> when I'm going into that light color. Now you want to make sure the brush is pretty dry. You don't want alcohol in the brush. Um, if it's too wet it kind of bleeds out and it, it does bleed out a little bit and that's okay. It kind of adds to that that washy watercolor look. So I'm just picking up a little bit of the alcohol ink um, on here and then I'm just filling in. It does not have to be perfect. The wetter you'll, it is, you'll see it starting to bleed out from the line. Um, that's just kind of the nature of working with this. So again, it's not gonna be perfect. You're gonna get that really soft look. If you don't want it to bleed, let this dry on your palette a little bit before you paint with it, and then it's more likely to stay kind of controlled. But I'm impatient, so I just, I go for it. Um, again, alcohol inks are kind of no fuss. So if I didn't like a color, I can go back in and add color over the top of it. Um, if I don't like it at all, I can just take an alcohol on some paper towel, wipe it off, and then it's gone and I can start over. So um, really kind of a no fuss technique. And I like to kind of go over it a couple times so I get a lot of kind of texture and things like that in there. It won't be smooth. If you go back in here and touch with your brush, it's gonna not be smooth. So if you want a smooth look, don't keep working it and fussing it. Okay, so I've got my pink down. I'm now going to clean my brush. And now I'm gonna move on. Now, this color will dry down on the glass. If I wanted to reactivate it, all I need to do is have a little bit of alcohol in my brush and it will reactivate. I'm gonna go in with some lettuce alcohol ink. That's way more than I need, but that's okay. Um, picking up just a little bit of that and I'm going to add this kind of to the base of these flowers and again you can use whatever colors that you want you can see I had a little bit of pink let me show you here so I have a little bit of pink right in here but if I want this green just go over the top of it and now it's green so like I said it's very easy to kind of fix any oopses that you ha might have you know change colors of things I really love how it just I don't know it just has a lot of fun texture I'm gonna clean my brush and you can see it is bleeding outside of there, but that's okay. Um, it just gives you that very soft ethereal look. Okay, I'm gonna go in with teak wood for the branch. Don't need very much of that at all. Um, when I do my what's in my cart video, I will have all the different 
mediums that I have in there and the colors that I have will be listed in that video. So if that video is already live, I will link that down below for you guys. I'm just gonna add a little bit of this onto the branch. And I do kind of drag it up into the green and let things kind of mix together just a little bit. And so I am laying the color down in the lines and then if it feathers out, it feathers out. It's not the end of the world. If you didn't like that, you could have a little bit of alcohol on your brush and kind of clean up the edges, but it's gonna be, there's gonna be texture. So again, just kind of play with it. You can't mess up. If you don't like it, you just go over it with some alcohol, wipe it off and start over. Just make sure again, you're working on the back, not the side that you stamped on. Last, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of cranberry. This is where we're gonna add all of that dark pink in there. The light pink does not have to be wet for this next step. Um, it kind of activates itself. So I'm going to pick up just a little bit of that and then I'm going to kind of drop it at the base and then drag it into the leaves and that's going to give that shading look that we have. I mean I just I love love the look of this but it may not be for everybody, that's okay. You could just stamp these and color them in with watercolors or whatever you want, but this is just a fun way to use those. So there you go, there are the flowers. And for this panel, I did go ahead and splatter on there a little bit. I first went in with Cool Perry, but that didn't add too much color. So I'm gonna go in with Stone Washed. And then I'll go in with a little bit of Cool Perry also just for giggles there okay so I'm just gonna pick this up on my brush and then tap it just like you would paint and it kind of blossoms and blooms and does its own thing if there are splatters on the flowers you can see it just kind of like pushes the ink away from itself um, and just add some more texture in there just really 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 fun okay that's it that's done and this dries really quickly you can heat set this if you want to um, but in just a matter of seconds it is dry and so you can see you can't really see on there but once you put it on your page it looks like you watercolored it on the page it's just really pretty so there's that you could go ahead again and fussy cut those out I do get questions about how to attach acetate into your Bible I'll either sew it to something, staple it. Um, you can use uh, adhesive, like a liquid, clear liquid glue. Let me see if I have one right here. Yes, this uh, Tombow Mono Aqua Liquid Glue. I would use my finger and smear it over the entire back side of the acetate and then stick it down. The key with that is you want the entire back of the acetate covered um, with whatever heat adhesive you use and that makes it a little more invisible. You can also use a Xyron sticker maker, which I have right here. Um, I'm out of tape in mind, but basically you feed your ephemera piece through here, pull it out and it creates it into a sticker. They have different sizes of these for the larger pieces. Um, that's another way that you can adhere it. Uh, or you can just do it as an overlay. So maybe you want to um, add a little washi tape or something at the top and have it as a flip up overlay again adding it cutting it into a tag shape to incorporate into your tag bob um, that is a way that you can use it as well so there is the alcohol ink stamped look again remember that is on the back side so if I flip this back over this is actually the orientation that it would be there really 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 love that so let me clean up my mess and we'll move on to the next technique all right, um, before I do this one, I wanna mention the cleaning up the alcohol ink. All I do is um, use a little bit of alcohol. I have some in a little container. Just that 91% isopropyl alcohol cleans up the ink off the glass surface. Um, and most other surfaces you might have it on that are non-slick, that will clean it up. So that's what I did off camera. But moving on to the next technique is using your stencils for dry embossing. I have things sticking to it because I've got stickiness <laughs> on that stencil. Okay, so I'm gonna be dry embossing on some cardstock and then also dry embossing on some vellum. And so basically we're just using the stencil kind of like an embossing folder to add texture. So there is actually texture to these pieces. I kind of amplified the texture with another technique here, um, but it's just a really simple way to add some interest. With this particular kit, um, it's not really a grungy kit like last month's Contending for the Faith. So I'll probably use a lot of things just tone on tone, white on white, so just taking white 
cardstock um, and adding some texture with stencils um, just kind of adds a fun element to it that you can then um, create a pocket out of it or a tip in you know you could add another piece of paper back here and then do your journaling um, just kind of a fun interesting way if you are on a budget and you, you know, love the look of embossing folders, um, but you know, they only have really, you know, a couple techniques that you can do, stencils would be a great thing to invest in because you can use them like a traditional stencil, blending inks or paints or things like that through them. Um, but you can also use them to, you know, get texture with them as well. So lots of different things you can do with stencils. So if you can only pick one or the other, I probably would invest in a variety of stencils. So let's kind of do the most simple version here first. It's going to just be dry and bossing on some white cardstock. Um, I'm just using some hammer mill um, cardstock I will link down below. And then I do have a Spellbinders Platinum 6 um, die cutting machine. Uh, each machine is going to be different what uh, sandwich that you use. I get a lot of questions about my die cutting machine. This is my favorite because it folds up. Um, I do have an entire tip Tuesday about embossing machines and, or I'm sorry, die cutting machines and the different things, you know, to use with it and how to use it, all that goodness. But for this technique, we are going to need the, uh, base plate. That's the big chunky one here. The soft embossing mat. That's this brown floppy one. And then the purple embossing plate. Now, like I said, each machine is going to have a different sandwich depending on which one you're working with. So you can find that information online. So I'm going to use the thick plate and my embossing mat. I'm going to lay down my paper and then I'm going to lay my stencil over the top of that. Oops. And then I'll go ahead and just lay the embossing plate over that. And that is the sandwich that we're going to run through here. And you can go, you know, a couple passes to get a really deep impression. Um, because the stencil is a little on the thinner side, you're not going to get the same type of texture that you would from like a 3D embossing folder that really has all that chunk to it. But not everybody wants all that texture in their Bible. So this is kind of a nice way to you know just have a little bit of texture so then as i remove this it may be hard to see on camera i'm going to try to catch the light there there you go you can see it's pressed that cobblestone texture into the cardstock so you can leave this as is um but let me kind of show you how to jazz this up so i'm going to use this piece of paper um and i'm going to blend some ink onto this panel. I'm going to use some spun sugar and a makeup brush. Um, this is Distress Oxide. So I'm going to start by blending this. And this is just going to coat everything in color. It's going to coat the raised areas, the depressed areas, um, and just kind of give me a base. And even just adding a little bit of ink kind of brings out the detail of your embossing even more. As you can see, it's kind of catching the edges, making that a little bit darker, but we'll take this a step further. So you can build that up to, you know, as intense as you want it, but I'm going to go ahead and dry this real quick. Okay. So that is mostly dry. Now you can see on this one, I have these shiny raised areas. So here's how you do that. We are going to line the stencil back up over itself. Maybe if I can find the shapes that I did here. There we go. And then I am going to prep this with the powder tool because we are going to do some embossing. So the powder tool just makes sure that everything's dry and that the embossing powder is only going to stick to the places that I want it to stick. So I'm going to coat that really well because I did use Distress Oxide ink, um, which takes a little bit longer to dry. Okay, so now I have my stencil laid over the top of it and it kind of nestles down into place because there are those depressed areas. Then I'm going to go over it with some Versamark clear sticky ink. You could also probably use the embossing dabber from Tim Holtz and Ranger. That probably would work as well. I'm just going to make sure I got plenty of ink and I'm just kind of pushing it through the stencil. 
I'm gonna lift that off. I flip this over so I don't have stickiness on there. And you can see even just the adding the Versamark kind of darkens some areas. But now I'm gonna add some clear embossing powder. You could do this with embossing glazes also. You know, any embossing powders you can add on here. But I just thought the clear would add kind of a just very simple look. I'm going to dump my excess back into the jar here. All right, and then we need to go ahead and melt our embossing powder. So I'm just gonna use an embossing tool to do that. Okay, so now I have those shiny areas and we really can do any combination of things at this point. So uh, you could have done the clear embossing powder before any ink and that would leave your stones white. You could do different colors. I'm just gonna go back in with some more spun sugar, blend this over the top and that um, embossing powder is gonna act as a resist. So now the ink is only going to adhere to the exposed paper, which is like the grout in between my stones. So I'm just gonna kind of blend that on there and deepen it, but again, you could use a variety of colors. You could use your embossing glazes. I mean, there's a lot you can do. You do wanna make sure that your uh, embossing is dry before you do, or cool, I should say, before you do that step. And then I'll just take a baby wipe and kind of gently brush ink off of the embossed areas. And so now you have your stones look like they are lighter than the grout areas. So it's, it's not as noticeable with the pink as it is with the blue. You can see there the difference. And so you could do this with any of them. You could go in with your floral stencil and then you could use an embossing pen and kind of individually color in areas and add you know, colored glazes, colored embossing powders to certain areas. Um, I mean, there are lots and lots of different ways that you could take this technique um, just from that basic start there of adding texture. So they're just doing it on cardstock. This one in particular, I did use a deckle edge trimmer to kind of trim around the edges. I will link that down below, but now I've got a piece that I can use as a layering element. Again, tip-ins, things like that. But let me show you how to do this technique with vellum. So let me clean this off here. Okay, so these two panels were done with vellum. This is just some colored vellum that I have. You can do clear um, or the frosty kind. I will link some options down below for you. Vellum is very finicky if you've ever played with it. It does not really like moisture. Um, it can crack really easy, but if you, you know, take some, some tips and tricks along the way, we'll, we'll make it, we'll make it work. So if you were to run this through just like I did the cardstock, so laying down your base plate, your mat, your piece of vellum, your stencil, I use the floral stencil from Tim Holtz for this one, your embossing plate, and then run it through. And if you did it just like that, you're going to get some cracking. So you can see that there's actually a tear in the vellum. Um, there's little cracks and pieces. You can actually hear it when it's running through that it's cracking. Um, so at first I thought, well, this, this might not work, but I did find, I did find a way to make this work. So I'm going to use my base plate, my embossing mat. I'm going to lay down my vellum. And then before I put on the stencil, I'm going to mist my vellum with a little bit of water. Um, so I'm using the Distress Sprayer. This one, if you kind of halfway pull the trigger, it like splurts out big blobs of water. If you pull the trigger all the way down and quickly, it gives you a fine mist. So I'm gonna fine mist just two light sprays. That's just going to kind of soften up the vellum. It is gonna wanna start to curl. We will we'll deal with that towards the end here. I'm going to lay down my stencil. I'm going to put that embossing plate over the top of that, I'm trying to not shift things. And then I'm going to run this through my machine. Now I am only going to do one pass with this because I don't want it to 
it won't take a lot of texture. Vellum is very, very delicate, so you, you can't use vellum with like your 3D embossing folders. Um, vellum really works best with this technique with the stencils. Okay. So let's see what we got here. So you will notice there may be a little bit of cracking, but not nearly as bad as it was without the water. You can mist it a little bit more, but you don't want to like soak it with water. Um, but there is texture, but you can see as it dries, <laughs> it's wanting to start to curl up. So there are a couple different options to deal with the curling. You can see this one, I have fixed the curling. So you can set heavy books on this, let it sit overnight, and it may eventually flatten out. You can also run this through a laminating machine or a mink machine uh, just with nothing just you know in the carrier case run it through the heat and the pressure will kind of smooth it out but not everybody has that but I know a lot of women have a hair straightening tool so that is what I have and I actually have it set to the lowest heat mine will go to you don't want to scorch your vellum so you want it as low as possible and then you're just going to run this over it does not get rid of the texture um, it does flatten it just a smidge but it does still hold the texture in the vellum but now I can go through it's drying it it's flattening it back out and then I won't have as much of that curl and it maintains the texture so I just keep going over it until I've gotten it you know it won't be a hundred percent flat but it will be flatter so there is that, and then you can see that texture in the vellum. Again, you can use little bits and pieces of this, use it as an overlay over a card if you want to, or a photo or whatever it might be um, for attaching vellum. Same kind of ideas apply as the uh, acetate, that's stapling, stitching, uh, running through a Xyron sticker maker. Um, you can use liquid adhesive, just very, very thin over the entire back of it. That one isn't ideal for vellum because again, it does want to kind of curl and wrinkle. I typically just stitch it onto something or staple it onto something, or I use this as a layering element. So like I would tear little bits and pieces of this off, lay it on my page, and then I would actually adhere with glue or whatever in an ephemera piece or a journaling card or something over the top of that and kind of sandwich it and let that be what holds my paper to my page. So there is an example for using uh, your stencils with vellum. So there is that technique. So there's a look at a few different ways that you can use the products from the Follow Me release. Again, you can use this with any of the other releases um, or collections. This just kind of gives you some ideas for working through this month's kit in a creative way. I will have everything linked down below for you guys that is still available. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below for me. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, if it was helpful, if you wanna see more of this type of video. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Be sure to click on that bell notification button and then anytime I upload a video, you will be notified right away so you don't miss an upcoming video from me. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.